So I, I, I'll, I'll give myself as an example, because as you were talking, I can think through an experience I had with my husband yesterday. So in preparation for my daughter's graduation, we're trying to get all of our decorations and things in order to celebrate her. And so I have a certain expectation of what I wanted to occur. And so I tried communicating that. But I could also sense yesterday, and this is why it's so important to learn yourself, right? I could also sense yesterday that my vulnerabilities were at a high sensitivity, which meant that I was going to be easily triggered, right? And one of the things that's really hard for me that I can point back to my fatherless daughter experience is asking for help, mm -hmm. especially asking for help from a male. Because in cases where I asked for help from my dad, he kind of didn't show up for me. Okay. And that's no slight against him. My dad is my dad. I love him. Rest his soul. But he just didn't show up for me consistently. And so when I have to make myself available to ask for help from my husband, I do it on pins and needles, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because I am just not confident, even though his track record is good, right? After all of these years, and we've been married 26 years, wow. and what he doesn't realize is that I'm still wrestling with what we're talking about right here, which was ingrained in me as a kid. So it's no shade to him to say, I don't think you're going to do. What it is, is a trigger for me to say, I am making myself open and vulnerable because I'm asking for help from a male that in my experience, my early on signs say, you're not going to show up and you're not going to do it. And so where I have to begin to recognize is that he is not him. And even though his track record is longstanding over many years, I still struggle with that. Mm -hmm. I still struggle with having confidence that you are going to come through for me because what was ingrained in me as a kid is what was a no show was a no show. And so I can relate to what you're saying. I can relate to how you began to function in these relationships and you at the beginning you you try to make sure you're like you're good right yep. and even though I have years of experience with my husband and even though his track record is long-standing and good for showing up every time I ask I brace myself right because of where it all began for me and uprooting that is a lifelong thing that you have to be conscious of. That's why when you talk about establishing those rules of engagement and talking about what's important to you and talking about how people, um, how you need people to show up for you, that is absolutely powerful and key of how you made the connection to that childhood experience of being a fatherless daughter and how it's impacting each and every one of us on that spectrum now. And so I think that's just really huge. And like I said, that's, that's my own experience that I have to deal with time and time again. And I'm sure you have examples from your clients of where they wrestle with that, or even from your own experience. Do you have anything you want to share? Yeah, actually, I do. As you were talking, the one thing that was coming to me was a routine of resistance. Mm -hmm. And I have been speaking about this for days now. I really feel like the Lord has just continued to put this on my spirit, a routine of resistance, because this is something that is absolutely needed in order for you to be committed to the person that you are today and not reverting back to who you were before, not reverting back to allowing your fears to rule you. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I I tell my clients that um, should absolutely be in their routine of resistance is the idea of inspecting your fears. Mm -hmm. And so what that looks like is that you're going to now look for the evidence of the things that you're 
afraid of. Mm -hmm. You said that you're um, usually fearful and you're like on pins and needles anytime you have to ask your husband for help with something. But you know that his track record has been that when you have come to him with something, he has come through, you know? And so if you know that the evidence is telling you that the fear that you have is not real, then you need to focus on what's actually true right here in this moment. And so, yes, you are likely going to maybe have some um, apprehension about asking him for things going forward. And this may just be something that you constantly have to work through, but inspecting your fears and seeing if there's any evidence to support why you had this fear mm -hmm. is something that I would encourage you to do. Mm -hmm. Because in doing that, you'll be able to see whether or not the fear is founded on anything real, or if this is just a residue of the relationship that you have with your father. Mm -hmm. And if it's the residue, then it's work that you have to do around that. But you know for a fact that you can still walk in the truth of my husband is going to be there for me when I ask him. He has always held space for me to be authentic and bring my full self to. He has created the type of environment with me where I can be vulnerable and I know that I'm emotionally safe there. So because you know these things, you can focus on the truth of that, mm -hmm. even if you're still a little bit scared to ask him things. So that's what I would encourage you or anyone in that moment. I, I love it because that's where the assertions come in because it is making those type of assertions that begin to do that mindset shift. Mm -hmm. And I hope in my transparency that people begin to realize how impactful those childhood experiences are to how we function in our adult life, mm -hmm. how we function in our relationships. This isn't just happenstance that you're acting or feeling or being vulnerable in this way. You usually can pinpoint it back as Bernadette has done to a experience of something that has happened before that was traumatic to you. Mm -hmm.